rise and fall of a hero, and the fall of an empire. These are among the world-shaking events chronicled in River of Stars, the newest epic novel by Guy Gavriel Kay. My personal choice for best fantasy novel of 2013, and it's the book I'm reviewing on this episode of SFF 180. Hello everybody, TMW here, as always with my personal assistant, Wink. Guy Gavriel Kay is a master storyteller. Now, he is best known for novels set in very thinly disguised versions of actual nations and cultures. Uh, fantasy elements tend to be very lightly sprinkled into the proceedings, uh, you like a ghostly encounter here and there. And the thematic goal of his stories is to illuminate history and the human condition through the lens of fantasy, which is why I call his work crypto-historical fiction. River of Stars is set in Katai, an empire corresponding to Song Dynasty China. It's the same setting as Kay's incredible 2010 novel Under Heaven, and this equally majestic story takes place 400 years on from that book's narrative. Kitai is a diminished empire. Its military might is so reduced that outright incompetence is the norm. Almost 14 entire prefectures have been lost to the Mongol-like Zalu hordes living up to the north, and one Katai commander has made such a catastrophic blunder that it alone sets the stage for the beginning of the end. The Emperor Weizong barely concerns himself with governing, devoting all of his attention to the construction of a magnificent garden on the palace grounds. Now, as readers, we bear witness to the inevitable, though gradual, decline of this once mighty civilization. All right, down you go. Now, at the center of events are a woman and a man. She is Lin Shan, the daughter of a minor court gentleman who becomes an imperial favorite due to her unconventional intellect, her education, and her skills at calligraphy, poetry, and song forms. He is Ren Dayan, the son of a completely insignificant provincial clerk, and yet he is one of those men who seems to have been marked by destiny right from the moment of his birth. And he will either become the Empire's savior, or its scapegoat, or possibly both. Now, the theme throughout the book is the impermanence of human endeavors when set against the vastness of time and history and the universe itself. It's indicated in the book's title. Kitai is crumbling, and this has been the fate of every great human civilization all throughout history. It will be the fate of ours. The characters here are all too aware of this, which is why so many of them are so deeply invested in being remembered by history. Now, as we watch this almost non-stop parade of human folly, from, from arrogant brash decisions, to egos run amok, to the wrong priorities being placed on the wrong things, we, we want to grab these people by the scruff and say, what are you doing? Can't you realize what is happening to you? Why are you doing this to yourself? Can't you see what is unfolding right before your eyes? And we're, we're filled with this sense of sadness and futility at, at the foolishness of, of human folly. But at the same time, we really are filled with a sense that there are things human beings can accomplish that are genuinely great. Very few writers are capable of evoking these feelings quite like Guy Gavriel Kay. River of Stars is a deeply poetic and graceful study of the way fate can turn on the most minor of occurrences. It's a richly absorbing and powerful human tapestry, and a novel by a master storyteller at the absolute peak of his form. All right, everybody, that's all I have time for this episode. Thank you, as always, for joining me. But remember, the most important thing, these are reviews you will not always agree, but if you enjoyed watching, please, there are many things that you can do to help out, help the channel out, me out, leave a like, share this video on social media with your friends, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and encourage all of your friends to subscribe. And that way, I'll be able to share many, many more books with you in the upcoming years. And until next time, happy reading. That's good. I like that one.